Welcome back to Talking Shop. We are looking at the transfiguration of our Lord, but this is not the gospel podcast. This is the epistle. So we're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through 13. You can do 14 to 18 as well. Those are in parentheses, uh, but chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 6 as well. Um, take a look at some stuff about Moses, yeah. some uh, the glory of God shining um, the word of God. The yeah. word of God. Yeah. I mean, maybe some things that aren't helpful, some memes that we couldn't find. <laughs> Rabbit know. holes. Yeah. Rabbit punk. holes. Rabbit holes. Yeah, let's get to it. All of it. Let's do this. Yeah. Spit out my load in every way. Yet I'm still welcome in the arms. Welcome back to Talking Shop. We are in 2 Corinthians 3, 12 to 13 and 4, 1 to 6, although there is the 14 to 18 uh, variant in there that you can add if you want to do the whole thing. Uh, helps you tie it into Moses really well. It's Transfiguration Sunday. Yep. So the Old Testament stuff, we talked about this just a minute ago, the Old Testament stuff is either you can use Moses or you can use Elijah. Mm-hmm. Um, as we talked about, it seems if you're going to use 2 Corinthians, you're probably going to want to use Moses mm-hmm. as your Old Testament text. Uh, just to get the 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 connection uh, there, because that's what Paul does. He uses Moses as as his example in here as well. Um, so jumping into it in verse twelve of chapter three, since we have such a hope, of course you read that and you go, "What hope do we have?" <laughs> right? And and you've got to jump for a little further back in chapter three. I think if you, we needed one verse, uh, you could probably use verse nine. And this is sort of one of these phrases that. Paul repeats in many and various ways in his different letters for if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness must far exceed it in glory. Right? Mm-hmm. So if, uh, if, if sin came through Adam, how much more does salvation come through Christ? You know, it's that kind of, mm-hmm. of idea. Uh, and and this, is, this is the hope, right? Or did I miss it? I mean, that, that seems to be the hope that we have. Yep. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> resurrection, the whole Jesus all, thing, the, and, yeah, and, all, all that Jesus stuff. Like, like died, rose, forgiveness of all of your sin. It's this whole thing, right? It's a whole thing. It's a whole yeah. thing, um, right? And so, because we have that hope, and it's a very specific hope, right? This is not some sort of an ethereal sort of "Hey, what's your story?" thing. This is now. This is the story. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, we are bold, he says, and that's bold, very bold and you can be bold uh and then he goes and then he bags on moses a little bit right not, not like moses mm-hmm. right who would put a veil over his face is verse 13 so that the israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end what is that history guys right yeah moses on mount sinai coming down he was in the presence of god's glory and holiness and uh you cannot be that close to God's glory without it rubbing off on you. Right, right. And so he shone like the sun, I mm-hmm. believe is the phrase that the text uses. Uh, yeah. Uh, and they had to cover him up because they couldn't take it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't translate it, but let's just go through 14 to 18 really quick because I think it helps create continuity mm-hmm. as you jump into chapter 4. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted, because only through Christ is it taken away. Right. They being the Jewish people who are not Christians. Right. And Moses being symbolic of what? The law. The law. law. Right. Right. Exactly. So Moses is not just this guy Moses, but it's even what does he represent? Right. Uh Uh, Represents the law and, and what the purpose of the law was. Right. Uh-huh. If you reach back to verse, verses seven through eleven, you kind of pick some of that up. Yeah, ministry of death carved in letters on stone right. <laughs> came with glory, so that the Israelites could not dir- look directly at the face of Moses because of the glory of his face, though it was fading. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be much more glorious? Mm-hmm. For if the ministry that brought condemnation has glory, the ministry that brought righteousness has even more glory. In fact, in this case, what was glorious is no longer very glorious because of the greater glory of that which surpasses it. 
Indeed, if what is fading away was glorious, how much more glorious is that which is permanent? Right, right. So it was a hardening of heart because of that. Because yeah. they were clinging to that thing rather than the grace. Than the that thing Christ that it pointed brought. to. Right, mm -hmm. exactly right. And to the fact that it points to, the law always points to that which you cannot do. Yep. And so first, you need, first and second use. Right. And so you need another mm -hmm. uh, who can, obviously, Jesus. Maybe not obviously, but should be obvious, right? Jesus. Uh, verse 15, yes, to this day whenever Moses is read, the veil lies over their hearts, which is the same thing as, as the other part, right? But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Uh, this, of course, is the idea of repentance, right? The turning towards something. Repentance is not just turning away from something. It's actually turning towards yeah. someone, uh, turning towards the Lord. Yeah. Uh, and turning then, toward the grace and the mercy of God. Right, yeah. right, and away from your own junk. Mm -hmm. uh, 17, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Um, we, we almost get almost Trinitarian kind of language yeah. here at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's freedom in Christ, freedom in turning towards Christ. Right, because everything else that we try to put in place of him will enslave us, mm -hmm. the law included. But you can make a whole big list of stuff, <laughs> right? right? Right, but this is where, I mean, I mentioned first and second use. This is where the third use comes in. Uh, now the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where is the spirit of the Lord? Well, it's within each of us. We are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Um, we have the freedom now to heed the law and it not bring us death but it brings life to those whom we love and serve right vocational stuff mm -hmm. right which we talk about a lot on this podcast we really do yeah um, it's hard not to well yeah and and it's it is the letters of paul right so there's going to be just a ton of that christian living vocational type stuff in there mm -hmm. um uh, 16 or 18 rather and we all with unveiled face Behold the glory of the Lord, that we get to see Him, uh, are being transformed. And, and here we get a connection to the transfiguration, right? Uh, why this is being used for that Sunday, being transformed in the same image from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Mm. Right? I mean, is that, that seems to be kind of the big connection towards this Sunday, uh, which is kind of why you almost need it. In many ways, certainly you're going to want to mention it if you're using it. Uh, you probably have to. You wouldn't have to. It depends on how how biblically literate your congregation is, right? Yeah. And if you did the Transfiguration Gospel last year, you might be able to do this, especially if you've just read it. You know, I mean, right. in, in in most churches, if you're using the liturgy, it's alright to take a couple paragraphs and connect this to that, right? Like, right. Do use the gospel reading, right? Read the gospel reading, mm -hmm. and then, right, if you're preaching this Second Corinthians text, take a couple paragraphs and just connect the two. Yeah, exactly, and give them the, the context of why this build is that bridge that. for them. Right. Well, because that's what the the apostles are doing in their letters. They're expositing the gospels. Um, now, at this point, we're all four gospels written. No, maybe a couple of the synoptics, but for sure not John. But Paul is using the stories of Christ and the stories of the Old Testament to then teach these people who are in Corinth. Right. So it's right. it's all fair game. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. And and you you do need to though, I think if you're preaching this text, you've got to make that bridge for them because I don't I don't think enough of our people are biblically literate. Oh yeah. Those, some of them those, some of them will get it right off. Some of them will be like veils and and what and right. Moses, you know, and yeah. all that. So You've got to. You're going to have to to tell those stories. The odds of your people being biblically literate are pretty low, and and getting worse by the mm -hmm. by the year, right? Mm -hmm. um, by the minute. By the minute. <laughs> Four verse one. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. That might be just a message, a little little hidden message in there, just for pastors, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, don't, you know, don't lose heart. Uh, this is this is we we have hope, right? Verse twelve of, of chapter three. 
Well, yeah, and that, if the reading would have started with the therefore, we would have said, well, what is it therefore? Right, and, and we would have gone to verse 12. So yeah, so, right. you know, the that last part there. Um, or, right, the verse right before it. Yeah, from that, one degree to that another. That we are being transformed into his own image from mm-hmm. one degree of glory to another. This yeah. too is from the Lord. Right, yeah. like, that's the therefore, is the verse immediately preceding it. Like, yeah. Don't let the chapter and verse numbers and headings get in your way of how it was actually written. Sure. Um, yeah. I, I think of when my uh, kids leave toys outside and we live in the desert and everything gets sun bleached, right? If you leave it outside, yeah. everything gets sun bleached. Or it just turns to dust. There's <laughs> that too, right? <laughs> but, um, right, all of us reflecting the Lord's glory with an unveiled face are being transformed into his own image from one degree of glory to another. Like, we're being exposed to the sun. We are being yeah. sun-bleached, in a sense. It's a pretty cool, uh, actually, I mean, if, if you... That's a good image. Yeah, I mean, if you live or work in any kind of a desert climate... You or if your kids ever leave toys outside, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, right. You uh, you can, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's actually, that's really nice. Uh, it changes things, right? Yeah. The sun does. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, being being conformed to the image of Christ, which and, is a and since we're being sun bleached, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we don't lose heart. We we have this ministry as a result of the mercy shown to us. We're not discouraged, right? Mm-hmm. Right, knowing full well that it takes time, but it, it, it's it's a change that's that's ongoing. Yeah, uh, verse two. But we have renounced, and and it's kind of interesting the the words in here, disgraceful secret, shameful, crafty, kind of depending on how you do the translating, disgraceful, underhanded ways. I uh, refuse to practice cunning mm-hmm. or to tamper with the Word of God, right? Uh, that's probably really good advice. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Uh, we live in an age of apostasy, right? mm-hmm. don't we? We live, we live in an age where, and you know, I'm always, I'm always fascinated by that word because that, that word is, is, I will say the opposite of what Scripture says, even though I have no proof. <laughs> mm-hmm. Even though a year ago I was saying something else, a, a, an apostate, right, is one who yeah. says, you know what, I want to do it this way. Yeah. You know, and it's contrary to God. Um, uh, we have, I don't know, have we talked much about like the Pope and his recent statement about you know uh, uh, blessing homosexual union and all that stuff? No, I, mean, I don't think we have. We, we we probably haven't mentioned that, but I mean, th- there's an an act of apostasy, right? Where he, I mean, the, yeah, Antichrist is going to Antichrist. Right. The Bible is clear mm-hmm. on on quite a few things. There's a lot of stuff that's a little bit gray on, but uh, quite a few things it, right. it's clear. Uh, so, like, how do you get there? What? And, and this is one of the. How do you know apostasy? It's when you go, huh? Like, how did they even get there with that? Yeah. Uh, and 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 I think that's probably what this is kind of ca- talking about. I mean, what do you think? Nothing. Huh? Too much. No. Uh, <laughs> not you didn't, enough. Uh, you didn't even give me a second to yeah, think so about it. Uh, I mean, we've we've renounced those things, right? right? That's uh, and this is Paul talking to a culture full of people that certainly practice disgraceful things, things that God would call abominations and all all that sort of thing. Um, we don't tamper with God's word. We we hold fast to the truth. Um, yeah, that's what I got. I don't know. Adam, where are you at on apostasy? Uh, I saw a great meme the other day. I don't know. <laughs> I like memes. Meme? With, with uh, the current pope and uh, John the Baptist's head is on the floor. You've got the couple and he says, I bless the couple, not their union. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> yes, I need to see the picture. Right, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh man, yeah, yeah. I mean, but it, it's it's that kind of stuff, right? It's the stuff that you go, how is that even possible? You're gonna have to post uh, that picture in the comments. On yeah, this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, how is that even possible? Um, uh, 
And, and you know, and it'd be one thing if he had said, "We we love all of our neighbors, mm-hmm. even even the ones who are, are dealing with homosexuality, or we we support our brothers and sisters that are practicing celibacy, even though they they have their, their tendencies towards homosexuality, right? Sure. Uh, but that's not what it was. It was this clear declaration against what the Bible has to say about living like that. And there, it, it, I mean, that's just one example of stuff, but I mean, that's one that's it's, it's a problem. super mm-hmm. recent. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very yeah. much out there and in our face and um, the, the amount of lobbying that goes into making those things come through as true and good and right. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just Well, it's sounding. interesting because it took him 45 minutes to explain why he was doing that. If it takes you 45 minutes to explain why this is a good thing, it may not be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've read some dissertations like that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. Anyways. Not so yours, the, though. No, not mine. Um, anyways, this, this idea of tampering with the Word of God. It's uh, a bad it, plan. It's, it's a bad plan. It's a dangerous thing. Uh, and it's simply as as preachers and as and as people of God, we're called to simply say the words of Jesus. Right? Don't get creative. Right? Your creativity is not the. Uh, while you know, as as far as the craft of preaching goes, creativity is is part and parcel with rhetoric and putting all of these things together in, in an mm-hmm. intelligible way and, and doing things differently every now and then because it, your people may not even notice, but it engages you better and it'll engage their brains better if you use different structures, if you do different things, you know, yeah. it engages them better versus they're like, okay, pastor's going to have an intro story, he's going to have three points and is a closing story and uh, somewhere in the middle of there I'm probably going to get some Jesus and that kind of thing. And, it's, and that, if they're already ready for that Every time you preach, you yeah. can help keep them interested, in just rhetorically, yeah. sure. by changing up the way you move through the text, the way you move through the preaching task. Yeah. Um, but you don't get to tamper with the word, right? Right. You don't get to play with that. I mean, I don't. We probably don't want to go too much deeper into this, but right. verse three really explains what we're talking about with. Uh, the culture seeking to make God's word say what they want it to yeah, say. Yeah, even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Yeah. 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 Well, in verse 4, too, let's include that in this. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers mm-hmm. to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, the light being the thing that changes us, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Blinded from that light. Yeah. You know, this probably is way off base, but... Maybe. Uh, there, there was an <laughs> article. Here we go. Hey, yeah, we're, we're already there. Hey, there's the uh, rabbit hole. Let's yeah. jump down it. Uh, there, was a, there was an article that Vice News shared a while back about people, uh, I think it was either in New York City or uh, maybe somewhere in L.A., where it's a whole community of people that live underground, and, like, they don't have the light of day <laughs> at all, ever. And, I don't know, that's what this, that's what this reminds me of. Like, they're, they're completely kept from seeing the light. Like the sewer people? Yeah. No, that's totally yeah. it. It is. It, <laughs> the Ninja Turtles. It's like something out of a Black Mirror episode or something. It's like. <laughs> it is. There were pictures of these people that were living. Really? In their, yeah. Wow. Somebody went down and did investigative journalism. Were the people who live in the catacombs of Paris? Yeah. Sure. You know yeah. about catacombs in Paris? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. But they're, they're blinded from seeing the light because right. they're not they're, they're not out in right. the sun. They... Uh, they're completely blinded to it. Um, the God of this world has blinded the yeah. world. To and they're not even the underground. Truth. It's simply they're just, they have their own veil on. Right. Yeah. So, uh, like, as a good image of that, I mean, I don't know how much you want to quote Vice News in your uh, <laughs> your sermon, but... Maybe don't, don't say, say Vice, Vice News. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a reputable news source sometimes. It, it's sometimes. And, but it's, it, it's, it's one of those preaching craft things that you want to avoid those words mm-hmm. like the word vice yeah in that context people are immediately going to be thinking what is it a, is it a, a prostitution ring underground or what you know that kind of thing and no it's not you know that's not what we're talking about here so yeah, yeah. So it's important to find to wordsmith it to find different ways to see a, a new source out of New York or something like that you know that kind of thing mm-hmm. and you could use that 
versus putting in a trigger word. Sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Yeah, that's the word of God. Right? Christ is Lord. Proclaiming Jesus, not ourselves. Right. And that's, that's your job, five, preacher. By the way. Yeah. yeah, that's your job, preacher. Right. Right. Proclaim, proclaim what, what is Jesus? By is. definition, right? The, mm -hmm. the messenger is called to proclaim uh, the one he's under lordship of. Yeah. yeah. Jesus is Lord. Uh, verse 6 For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, we get this reference back to Genesis 1, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, has shown in our hearts to give. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Um, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face. What is that? Well, this is your connection point to the gospel. Yes. Uh, yeah. The gospel reading, not just the gospel as a as a thing, but yeah. the Peter, James, and John. They see Moses and Elijah pop up, and then all of a sudden Jesus is shining. Mm -hmm. Like the sun, yeah. and that is them seeing his clothes him in his glory. Are, are whiter than well, I forget how the gospel puts it exactly, but whiter than the whitest white mm -hmm. is the way it's described. Yeah. And then in First John, John describes that we have seen him in his glory, the only God, mm -hmm. the only mm -hmm. Son of God, that sort of thing. I can't mm -hmm. remember the exact reference mm -hmm. off the top of my head. But. And it's interesting because both John and uh, Peter, James doesn't write right, but both John and Peter will reference that transfiguration multiple mm -hmm. times in their other writings because mm -hmm. uh, it was a, I mean, it was a big deal yeah. for them. That's you know, I don't know about deal. you. I've never seen Jesus shine no. in His glory, not yet. Especially with Moses and Elijah standing there and everything else. I mean, that's and then that's, shh, don't tell, tell anybody yeah, about this. Tell, <laughs> yeah, don't tell anybody. Oh, yeah. what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and so and because of all of that, we have hope. Yeah, I mean, back to the first verse. Uh, it's and and maybe that's the whole point of the transfiguration. The whole point of this text uh, is that even in the face of great adversity, even in the face of apostasy, even mm -hmm. in the face of those who would try to twist the word of God, even in the face of dwindling numbers, even in the face of financial crises, and you know, and you go on and on and on and on. Even in the face of all of that, we have hope. Yeah. Uh, and, and hope doesn't fail us. I'm sure I've read that somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> Romans something. Yeah, there. exactly. Does not put us to shame. Yeah, yeah we, we don't sit here wringing our hands mm -hmm. like, oh no, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, the pastor, there's not enough pastors, the congregations are right. closing. This is God's church. Right, right. He's got this under control. Preach yeah. the word. So he's gifts. got the whole world in his hands. Oh, he does though. It's, he's got actually, it's actually true. He yeah. does. Uh, and he's forgiven goddamn sinners like you and I. And, and he Praise uses God. us. And he uses your people. Uh, and he is still king on the throne. And he's still the one who is transfigured. Uh, unto eternity. Unto now. eternity. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, good. Anything else? Anything good? Uh, Isaac of Nineveh. When the apostle said, God who... Who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness has shined in our hearts. He referred to the resurrection. Mm. Okay. Who's you Isaac and why is he in Nineveh? That church father, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and a, you can absolutely make that move, right? Yeah. To the resurrection. Mm -hmm. the, making a move to the resurrection is probably 99% of the safest time a yes. pretty safe bet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He showed this yeah. resurrection to be the exodus from the old state, which in the likeness of Sheol incarcerates a person where the light of the gospel will not shine mystically on him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of like when in, in the Sermon on the Mount when he's talking about you're a light and you shine your light on the hill and mm -hmm. you know, put a, you know, I mean, that was the reference I always had in my head. But yeah. 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 I had shine bright like a diamond sink going in my head. <laughs> oh, no. I might also... Um, do a history or uh, paint a picture and make the connections from uh, the shepherds in the field at Christmas 
right? The mm -hmm. heavens open, the angel, the angelic choir is singing at the birth of Jesus, right? We get this little glimpse yeah. of the glory of Jesus, mm -hmm. even at his bloody birth, right? Right, with the angelic choir there. Here at the transfiguration, we get this little glimpse of the glory of God, right? And so we, we get these little glimpses, and I might tie that to worship, the divine service, the Lord's Supper, yeah. that, right, uh, the, our worship service is heaven touching down to earth, right? Yeah. I call it a little heavenly tornado touchdown. When those glimpses are everywhere too in the New Testament, I mean the, the healings are glimpses. The, yeah, the, right. You know, the the casting out of demons. It, the, right. It's the, the new kingdom, kingdom of God. Right. Yeah. Breaking into this old kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. The kingdom of heaven and, is like. And we yeah. get to be part of this. We see these little glimpses, as a hey, hold on, the new kingdom is coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and it's going to be glorious. Yeah. And that brings hope. Right. Because you know this is not all there is. Yeah. Right. Uh, and and there's something far better coming, yeah. Good, and it brings hope. Good, like, subscribe, tell us. Uh, we'll post that meme if you found it. I know Adam was looking for it. We couldn't find it over here. Uh, and and uh, God bless your preaching. <laughs>